Okay, alright. Hi everyone. So today we are going to discuss about the economics policy. So basically, before we discuss in detail what are the types of economic policy that being introduced by the government, let's first we look on the problems that we face in Malaysia before 1970. First, we face the problem of poverty. Second, we also face the problem of ethnic crisis. Beside that, we also have problem in economic growth. And of course, the things that lead to the ethnic crisis is the equity ownership. Okay, so the question: How government are going to count, to solve all this? All the problems that we have discussed before. So, in 1970, government has introduced new economic policy. Now, basically, this policy was introduced by Tun Abdul Razak, our second first prime, our second prime minister. Then, this uh, policy was. Introduced for twenty years, starting from nineteen seventy up to nineteen nineties, and basically this also is the first long term economic plan. And basically, this policy has served two objectives. Basically, there are two objectives of NEP. The first one, to eradicate poverty. Second, to restructure the society. For the first objective, basically. Government want to eliminate poverty regardless the races in Malaysia. The purpose is to make sure that the percentage of poverty in Malaysia can be reduced by the year 1990s. Whereas to restructure the society, the ultimate aim of the government is to bring the unity in the people and to prevent uh, ethnic crisis from happen again as what we face in 13 May 1969. So there are several strategies and plan has been designed government in order to achieve these two objectives. So the question is how to eradicate poverty. There are several action has been taken by by government to eradicate poverty. The first one, modernize. living conditions This strategy basically will include both community in the rural area and also in the urban, in the urban area The second one by creating more job employment By doing this government hope that the numbers of unemployment can be reduced and at the same time we'll make sure that every individual in this country have the stable and permanent income by doing that basically it will also can reduce the numbers of poverty uh, in malaysia third by encourage the people to participate in the high economics Sector. Government also want to make sure that every single community, regardless races, to involve in the high potential economic sectors like business, industry, and also technology. This will help the government to achieve the economic growth 
7% GDP for, uh, for the year 1990s. Last but not least, to increase the productivity of the poor. Government also believes that if the productivity of the poor can be increased, it also can contribute to the strategy to eradicate poverty in Malaysia by the year 1990s. The second objective and the second strategy of the government is to restructure society. Now, the objective of the government is to bring the national unity in order to prevent ethnic crisis from happen again as what we have faced in 13 May 1969. So, how government want to achieve this? First, to raise the people ownership. Second, to form business group among the Bumi Putra. When we talk about Bumi Putra, it also will include ethnics in Sabah and also Sarawak, beside Malay and also orang asli in the peninsula of Malaysia. Government also want to, wants to make sure that every single community in this country will get a free access in the education. By doing so, government wants to also reduce the number of illiterate in Malaysia by the year 1990s. And last but not least is to promote national unity. So, these are the four strategies that has been taken by government to restructure the society in order to achieve the objective of new economic policy. Okay, finally, let's us assess the outcome or the, the impact of new economic policy. So, after 20 years of being implemented, basically new economic policy, many uh, able to achieve several things. First, to install unity amongst the people. Second, to reduce the percentage of poverty in Malaysia. Third, to, to bring economy growth and government also managed to increase people ownership and last government also managed to make sure that the now the percentage of absolute poverty can be reduced and after 20 years implement this new economic policy government also managed to come up with a new policy to replace new economic policy known as a and so we are going to discuss about NDP in the next session. Thank you.